Sometimes division with the Egyptian method can get uh, pretty complicated when things aren't like going in evenly or if the remainders get complicated. For instance, here I'm going to try to divide 2 divided by 13. So the way I do it is I put a 1 and a 13. That's too big. So I go to a half, and that's 6 and a half. Still bigger. By my target is the number 2. So now I got the fourth. Six and a half becomes three. And a fourth. Still bigger than two. So get down to an eighth. Three becomes one and a half. A fourth becomes an eighth. So the first thing to notice is that this is less than two. Um, but I'm not quite up to two yet. I need a little bit more. Here's where I do the um, completion problems, where I basically add these up. To see how close I am to, to my target. And as you can see, I have, I'm just going to use common denominators. I have 1 and 5 eighths. So I need 3 eighths more. And 3 eighths just isn't such a bad one to do with the Egyptian fraction. Is 1 fourth, 1 eighth. We actually need it as, <clears throat> as unit fractions for this process. You could, I suppose, do 3 divided by 8 and do a little bit on the side. 1 half is 4, 1 fourth is 2, 1 eighth is one. Either way, that's what we need. Now here comes a little trick. The trick is, in order to get one-fourth over here on the right-hand side, the question is what needs to be put over here on the left-hand side. Basically I'm asking 13 times what unit fraction will equal one-fourth. And a trick is, by multiplying this denominator by this number, 13 times 4, I get 52, which means that 1 over 52 goes over there. Now, the reason that trick works, where you multiply this denominator here by this number you're sort of dividing by, is because if I take this expression and I multiply both sides by 4, and both sides by this sort of question mark. I get that. So now I've got my one fourth. I also need an eighth. I could get the eighth the same way. Thirteen times one over question mark equals one eighth, and do thirteen times eight. Or I could just see that one eighth is half of one fourth, so I double the denominator. And these are the two fractions I need, and that's why the answer to this question is. 1 8, 1 over 52, 1 over 104. That's one of the questions from the Rhine Papyrus. Uh, I'm going to do another question. This one is uh, question number 30. Question 30 wants you to divide 10 divided by two-thirds, one-tenth. This is um, 20 over, it's 20, it's 10 divided by 23 over 30. So, the way we do this process, what well, we start by making my chart, doubling, two-thirds times two is one and a third, tenth times two is one-fifth, Doubling again, I end up with two, two thirds, one fifth. You double with the doubling chart to get one third plus one fifteenth. This two thirds and one thirds can go together, so it becomes three and one over fifteen. My target is the number ten, so I'm going to go one more. Eight. I get six, two fifteenths from the chart is one ten 
1 over 30. Now at this point, if I add together this guy with this guy, he's still less than 10. But if I add on the one for the two row, it will be bigger than 10. But the one row is still smaller than 10. So at this point, I have uh, 13. I'm just going to write it down here. Uh, ends up becoming, with common denominators, I'm just going to add all these things up. I'm not going to show the work for it. But those three things are pretty close to 10. They're 9 and 29 over 30. I'm actually just going to write in 9 and 29 over 30 here. just to. So I'm just going to say that we need 130 more. So the trick is, if I, if I take a fraction, a unit fraction like this, if I multiply the denominator, which is the 30, by this expression, the thing I'm dividing by. So on the side, I'm going to do 30, well, 2 thirds, 1 tenth times 30, which becomes 2 thirds times 30 is 20, so it becomes 23. So what this means is that over here on the left, I could put 1 over 23. And that will get me exactly the thing I need. And that's why the answer to this question is 13 and 1 over 23. That, that gets me exactly 10. So the trick was, we basically wanted to know what, so do I multiply by 1 over something to get 1 over 30? And the method of doing that was to multiply this thing by the denominator. We've got 23. 23 ends up being the denominator of the fraction I need to multiply by. So those are two questions. One is part of the sort of introduction to the Rhine Papyrus where they make the 2 over n table. Now you can see how they got this answer for 2 over 13 for all, all the possible things that they could have gotten. That was the one that was easiest to calculate by this method. And question 30 in the Rhine Papyrus is pretty hard. And there's actually um, 31, 32, and 33 that are even harder um, as she goes up to 34. So there's even a few more of those, but uh, I'll leave those for another time.